The COVID-19 pandemic has been highly stressful for most people, and it can be particularly difficult to see a loved one struggle with feelings of anxiety and uncertainty. If you've ever had this experience, you can feel quite helpless when you don't know what to say or do when a loved one's highly anxious or possibly having a panic attack. Hey everyone, I'm Trevor Sullivan from Sullivan Associates Clinical Psychology, and today I'm going to talk about how to support a loved one who's struggling with anxiety during the COVID-19 pandemic. Before we get started, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. And if you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. That way, when we release more videos like this, you'll get notified. Anxiety is the most common mental health issue for children, adolescents, and adults. In Canada, roughly one in four people will experience an anxiety disorder over the course of their lifetime. And notice I said disorder. For a mental health issue to qualify as disorder, it needs to be a significant issue it's negatively impacting all facets of a person's life. So one in four people is fairly high, but it doesn't account for the many people who struggle with notable levels of anxiety that are still quite uncomfortable. Needless to say, anxiety is a very common problem. And we're going to take a look at a few actionable tips you can use to help support a loved one who's struggling with these feelings. For my first tip, it's important to acknowledge the issue by asking how your loved one's feeling. It could be as simple as asking, are you feeling okay? Have you been feeling anxious lately? Of course, it's important to choose your own words and you'll want to tailor them to fit whoever you're speaking to. But it's very important to ask in a way that shows genuine concern. There are people experiencing anxiety are some of the best actors and actresses that you'll ever meet. And they'll do their best to keep their feelings inside and cover up how they feel. And once again, the big key here is to show genuine interest and concern when you ask someone how they're feeling. Asking a question such as, you aren't feeling anxious again, are you? Isn't going to be helpful. It's already a highly uncomfortable, undesirable feeling to be anxious, and asking someone this way is only going to create negative feelings and possibly even feelings of shame. Not to mention, they'll probably be less likely to share how they're feeling in the future. So besides asking someone how they're feeling, it's also important to validate how they feel. Validate psychological jargon for taking the time to acknowledge or accept how someone feels. For example, saying to someone, I can understand why this would make you feel anxious, or I'm so sorry you're feeling anxious the example of validating how someone feels. The key to doing this effectively is to agree with and accept how someone's feeling. It's a very important step, even if you don't happen to feel the same way. By acknowledging how someone feels, you're essentially saying, I understand how you feel and it's perfectly okay that you feel that way. In a 2020 study by Dr. Z. Tran and colleagues, they found that validating someone's feelings is the best way to provide support when someone feels anxious. They also found that attempting to support someone by using the wrong words can make the problem worse. So simply put, understanding and acknowledging how someone feels in a genuine caring way is very important. The second thing I'd suggest doing to help a loved one who's struggling with anxiety is to encourage them to calm their body. And the best place to begin is to encourage them to use deep breathing. When we're born, we all breathe lower in the body from the diaphragm. And a great example of this is watching a little baby breathe while they sleep. You'll see their little bellies just bob up and down perfectly as they automatically take full, deep breaths from their stomach. And as we get older and more stressed, breathing tends to move upstairs, and we get in the habit of taking short, choppy breaths from high in the chest. So, provided your loved one is in the middle of experiencing a panic attack, I'd suggest a gentle introduction to deep breathing. When someone's anxious, there's a possibility they're going to feel somewhat irritable as well. And telling an anxious person to just breathe isn't always going to be met with enthusiasm. Not to mention, simply changing how you breathe might sound like a weak strategy when you first bring it up. And if your loved one's tried a few deep breaths in the past while they were feeling anxious or having a panic attack and found that it didn't stop the anxiety right away, they might have come to the conclusion that deep breathing isn't helpful. I'd love to tell you that deep breathing will stop anxiety quickly every time, but that's simply not the case. What I can tell you is that when it's done well and consistently, it helps to lower heart rates, lowers blood pressure, and that's going to move you closer to relaxation and further away from anxiety. When people use deep breathing, I like to see them follow a set breathing tempo. An example of a breathing tempo would be breathe in for three to five seconds, hold your breath for three to five seconds, and breathe out for three to five seconds. If you repeat this breathing tempo 10 times, and then alternate it with breathing normally, even just for a minute or two, it can help to create a greater sense of calm 
and help prevent you from becoming even more anxious. And certainly feel free to alternate this breathing tempo with breathing normally as many times as you like. If you have a loved one who's reluctant to try it, I suggest simply sitting with them, taking several slow deep breaths yourself, but in a really natural manner. It's not uncommon for people to mirror or match other people, so with any luck, they'll begin to pick up on how you're breathing and start to match your breathing tempo. Not to mention, emotions are contagious. So if you're becoming more calm and relaxed, this could help them to settle. For a third tip, you wanna help your loved one calm their mind. One great way to do this is by using relaxing self-talk, which essentially means using a few relaxing phrases that'll help your loved one to calm their feelings of anxiety. And you have the advantage of knowing your loved one well, so it'll give you insight in what to say to help them to calm down. If you're interested in a few examples, I'd suggest using simple calming phrases such as, everything will be okay, we'll get through this together, this feeling will go away shortly. For some people, trying to use calming phrases may not be helpful. If they're already feeling overwhelmed and just don't want to be calm in the moment, or feel as if there's nothing you can say or do to help them calm down. In that case, I'd encourage you to just listen to how they feel, let them know you're aware that you can't take their anxiety away, but you're still going to be there to support them until these feelings eventually calm down. And for anyone supporting someone who's anxious, remember this. All emotions are like waves. So what goes up must come down. And your loved one's feelings of anxiety will eventually come down as well. So once your loved one's calm, the next thing you can do is to help them think differently about anxiety if they're open to doing so. One way to do this is by using a strategy called reframing. Reframing means looking at a situation in a different way that can help us to change the meaning of it. And the goal in this case is to create a more positive meaning. So for example, if someone's feeling anxious about their financial situation, it could be seen as a short-term problem that can be fixed. Or because of the current pandemic, it could be seen as an opportunity to make important changes in the future about how they earn, manage, or invest their money. Or if someone's anxious about going outside due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, they could view staying indoors as a way to spend quality time with family that just wouldn't have happened to the same extent without the pandemic. In a 2013 study by Dr. Nicole Fluellen and colleagues, they found that people who naturally reframe anxiety-provoking situations, as opposed to just burying their anxious feelings, felt less stressed. But reframing is the only way to help people think differently about anxiety. Another way you can help a loved one to feel less anxious by thinking differently is help them recognize when they're jumping to conclusions. And with highly anxious people, there's a greater tendency to do this. And when I say jumping to conclusions, it means deciding something before you have all the facts. And when people jump to conclusions, this can create more problems such as catastrophizing, which means that not only do we assume there's a problem where there might not be one, but we make that problem even bigger than it deserves to be. In a 2006 study by Dr. Chris Fraley and colleagues, they found that one way anxious people can cause problems in relationships is by jumping to conclusions. So one way you could help someone who's anxious is to politely point out when they could be jumping to conclusions with the emphasis on polite and discuss the facts about what is actually occurring. For example, with the COVID-19 pandemic, someone experiencing anxiety could be jumping to conclusions about how many thousands of people in Thunder Bay and Northwestern Ontario will become infected by the virus. One way to help someone avoid jumping to conclusions is to point out what has happened so far and what is yet to occur. In keeping with our pandemic example, you could talk about how the people of Thunder Bay and Northwestern Ontario have made strong effort to flatten the curve, and there are very few people with the virus based on our population size because of this. So by helping someone to avoid jumping conclusions, it can help them to keep their feelings of anxiety under control. For my last tip, I want to talk about the reassurance seeking trap. Reassurance seeking occurs when you help someone with anxiety by telling them it's going to be okay, only to have that person come back to you a short time later and ask to be reassured again, instead of using skills and strategies they've learned to calm themselves. So you might be wondering, why is this a bad thing, especially if you don't mind helping somebody who's feeling anxious? And the reason is, because continuing to ask for reassurance can make the problem with anxiety worse. For example, someone keeps asking you, feel my head, I'm sure I have the coronavirus, and you continue to reassure them, but they don't feel warm, don't have symptoms, there's no reason to believe they've contracted the virus, continuing to tell them they're okay is only gonna provide short-term relief. Soon enough, feelings of anxiety can be back stronger than ever, and they'll likely feel that the only way they can manage their anxiety is to seek reassurance from you. So instead, what I encourage you to do, after reassuring them they're okay once, is to encourage them to use skills and strategies they've already learned to help manage their anxiety. You could remind them of the strategies they've learned to calm their body with deep breathing, 
calm their mind with relaxing self-talk, using reframing, and so on. And make a point of letting your loved one know that if they continue to manage their feelings of anxiety for gradually longer periods of time, it'll help their anxiety to get better as they become more accustomed to the feeling and it eventually bothers them less. So I hope you find these strategies helpful if you have someone in your life who's struggling with anxiety. If you need help implementing these strategies, please contact us at Sullivan Associates Clinical Psychology. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, and leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.